Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're briefly checking out the gaming performance of the AMD Ryzen 7 Pro 4750G, available through OEM channels or occasionally on eBay through third party sellers charging astronomical prices, the 8 core 16 thread 4750G Pro offers Ryzen 3700X like CPU performance and overclocked 3400G gaming performance. I never spend too much time testing these APUs because for the most part they are out of reach to a lot of people and when it comes to the integrated GPU, well, you've seen it all before. Or have you? A quick look at the Cinebench R20 result reveals impressive numbers. Unfortunately, I don't have any other APUs on hand for comparison at the moment, as they've all been sold as part of PC builds. But I'm hoping to build up a new CPU collection soon and then we can run some in-depth comparisons. For now then, let's focus the spotlight on the Ryzen 7 Pro and see what it can do. So despite being best suited to lower resolutions and settings, that doesn't put me off trying to push things as far as I can in some games. Some games run fine at 1080p anyway, and Fallout 4 is one of them. I took a trip through Concord following a pretty early quest line, and I'm quite surprised here that we were actually getting over 45 FPS. We're not even using particularly fast RAM, just 16 gigs of 3200 MHz DDR4, which is nowhere near the fastest RAM available. Red Dead Redemption 2 at 900p low exceeds 30 FPS on average, which is always impressive to see, though there will of course be some drops here and there. This is a more GPU intensive title, so the CPU part of our chip is just sitting back doing, well, not much. Though that seems to be the case for all of the tested games today, to be honest. The onboard graphics are always the bottleneck. I even had TAA enabled, and I was using the medium tech textures instead of low. 1080p is also doable, though towns like Valentine will cause more sub 30 FPS drops. 900p seems to be the sweet spot here. Cyberpunk was tested before the 1.2 patch I believe it is, uh, which came out the same day that I was editing this video, so whether performance has changed I can't be sure until I try it out later in the week. Even so, 1080p with 50% scaling gave us a 39fps average, which is fairly impressive, though everything is pretty hard to see. Unfortunately this is the sacrifice we must make for at least 30 frames per second. 60% resolution scale will also mean plus 30fps but there will be more drops to the high and low 20s. The Witcher 3, despite being an older title, isn't as easy to run as you might think. 900p was actually the best way to play because 1080p, although okay, did cause some drops in Novigrad, which is quite off-putting, especially if you come from somewhere else on the map that gives you 35fps on this hardware. The graphics and post-processing options were both set to their respective low presets, and nothing else was changed. In Dirt 5, the ultra-low preset set gave us decent enough frame rates, uh, albeit with a 75% render scale. This meant that even the 1 and 0.1% lows stayed above 30 frames per second, and what's more, this figure was taken from a race with multiple opponents, so single races or time trials should give you an even better result. So far so good, and the 4750G is doing alright. I'd be intrigued to hear about how this thing performs with faster DDR4, so let me know if you have one of these with faster memory in the comments below. So you probably know by now that these APUs, whether it be the 4350G, 4650G or the 4750G here, um, it can handle GTA 5 just fine. Even the 3400G puts up similar results. 70 FPS at normal was the best way to play, though some settings could have certainly been put on high, and that's something to consider if you're happy with a closer to 30 FPS experience, which, honestly, I am. Still, it is nice to know that GTA 5 is running with at least 60 frames per second, almost constantly with just a processor. It's a shame it's just so scarce to buy. Finally then, it's Crisis Remastered, which 
didn't do too well, at least not at 1080p. 900p was once again the best way to play, though 1920 by 1080 did still give us 30-ish FPS. It's just that the frame rate dropped quite a lot, especially during intense scenes, but it's no surprise considering the demanding nature of this game, and the fact that the integrated GPU is getting absolutely hammered here. I'd love to see something like this with a more powerful graphics chip built in at some point in the future, and I'm sure we will. But in terms of this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. We will have a more in-depth video comparing all three of these APUs at some point. If you enjoyed this one, then leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.